Hello, in this video, I'm going to be talking about self-doubt. What is it? Why does it come about? And what to do about it? Before I go on, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We put new content out all the time, so there's always something new to watch. Also want to remind you that you can go to yerba.com to get your personalized report. So what do I mean by self-doubt? Self-doubt comes about when we don't trust our abilities or our perceptions or we lose faith or confidence in what we're able to do. Self-doubt can occur with any serious illness and certainly with breast cancer. We start to doubt our ability to get through treatment or to make decisions. We might doubt even our past experiences. We may wonder, did that really happen? And we may doubt that we can make it through treatment and get through to the future, to the other side of all of this. Self-doubt can be worsened by changes in body image because of changes to our breasts or the abdomen or our arm. If our arm gets swollen, loss of hair, loss of eyelashes. There are lots of things that, especially if our self-worth is tied up to our appearance, which it is for most of us, at least to some degree, we can start to feel that we're not capable. And if treatment makes us more tired or makes us scatterbrained or makes us um, weary, it's different from tiredness, isn't it? It's a sense of weariness, of overwhelm, we might doubt ourselves. And this can be really uncomfortable. If you're used to being a confident person, it can be hard. And if you're used to being already, you're kind of on the border where you doubt yourself, it can really throw you into a difficult state. I want to normalize this for you. Anything that throws us out of our routine or takes us off our life story, the story we had for how the next weeks to years to the rest of our life is going to go, will raise self-doubt for many people. And if you don't have this in this video isn't relevant, maybe it will help you understand those people who do have self-doubt. You know, we get a lot of information thrown at us every day, and some of it's high quality and some of it's not. There's a lot of false information out there. If you make a decision about treatment and then people are sending you things on social media that counter counteract or contradict what you've already decided to do, that can bring about doubt, especially if you've not been a confident kind of person in the past. Many of us don't trust our intuition or gut feelings, and so this can be really difficult when doubts arise. So what can you do? Well, the first thing is know that this is normal. Know that self-doubt comes about when we've hit a roadblock or a speed bump in our life, when something's happened unexpectedly, or when we're overloaded with information, seeing multiple specialists and we feel we can't maintain it all. It's very normal, especially if you have ADHD and you get overwhelmed with information that can bring it up. I just want to invite you to say, of course I'm having self-doubt. This is normal. I'm not alone. And also separate yourself from those feelings. And by that I mean notice them and you can say to yourself, this is not me all the time. This is a difficult period. Other people have this. Finding support from people who will boost you up without telling you what to do, that can be a hard person to find, can be really helpful. Finding a support group, asking for extra time with your medical team, talking with somebody who's a social worker or a counselor can be really helpful. And you can focus specifically on these uncomfortable feelings of self-doubt. Make sure you talk with your team. This is a form of distress. It's real distress, it's a real thing. Make sure you talk with your nurse practitioner, your nurse, your physician assistant, like I said, your social worker, your physician. Get some help for this, especially if you find that it's pervasive. And what I mean by that, every day, most of the day. This is gonna make it harder for you to get through. You may find it helpful to lean on your faith. You may, if you believe in a higher power, you might find it helpful to surrender to your higher power, if not always, for right now. And many people find that this can give them a great deal of comfort to know that actually I'm not in control. That can actually be really helpful to people, and for others it can make it a little bit worse. As, with always, as always, use what's useful from what we share on our channel and leave the rest.
how to rebuild your confidence. It's worth addressing that. One of the things to do is to find what you're really good at and lean into it. So if you've always really been good at something, spend time doing that. And this might be during or after your treatment. So if you are a really good artist or writer, spend time doing that and maybe surprisingly try something new. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. You know, we're all learning new things and self-doubt can actually protect us from things like arrogance or being caught off guard. In short, if you find that you're doubting yourself a lot, you're withdrawing, you're having a hard time making, con making decisions, you're having a hard time with being other people, you're spending much of your day wondering if you're doing the right thing, I would remind you that you're not alone to seek support, come here, drop a comment or question, let us know how you got through it, connect with other people who've gone through it, and remind yourself this won't last forever. I've covered a lot in this video. I hope it's been helpful if it has. If you click like, that helps other people having self-doubt find this video. Subscribe to see more of our content. Go to yerba.com to get your personalized report. And as always, thank you for watching.